All right, uh, we are live again. Welcome to another yeah. episode of, of a Bitcoin class with Satoshi. I'm here with Dr. Craig Wright. He's a creator of uh, Bitcoin. My name is uh, Xiaohui Liu. I'm founder of uh, Script. And uh, what's the topic of today, doctor? Okay, so we're going to continue talking about DFAs and um, external uses of uh, Bitcoin and the script and how we can um, take that and extend it without all the current things about having to uh, have everyone have a node or um, it must everything must uh, validate everything or any of these other silly concepts. So um, the first thing I'd like to uh, sort of uh, look at is um, if we're going to consider SPV. Mm -hmm. So with SPV, the way it should work is I send you a transaction okay. and you can send it out to the blockchain. Now, on top of that, however, um, we can also, without keeping the entire blockchain, start monitoring transactions or filtering transactions that other uh, nodes, operators, etc., may receive. Okay. How is this uh, related to DFA? Uh, we'll get to that. But, uh, okay. Uh, so one of the things we might want to do is um, have limited updates on transactions that we could view to see whether something has been accepted, um, to see whether something has been processed. Uh, so when we're looking at a potential automata, we could have um, an a, a external process that takes alerts that are put mm -hmm. on the blockchain. Okay. Now, what we can uh, sort of link that to is a hierarchy of keys that no one else can calculate, um, that you and I can share and have a known way of verifying. Yeah, I think we talked about uh, this uh, in the last last yeah, episode. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, we did. We started uh, talking about that. But an example of what we can now do is use the external system as uh, a secure log and update for something else, for instance, a trigger. If I see this transaction, I do X. If I see that one, I do Y. So this type of transaction, when you see, you don't you don't necessarily have to scan the whole block, the, the main blockchain to, to get it. No, we can either get it uh, directly, or we can just be watching transactions and um, effectively doing something like a cuckoo filter or looking at the entire stream of transactions and just monitoring what goes by on the network. Okay. Um, or we can even have a third party host that sends out additional alerts. Mm. How is this yeah. uh, better than, like, say, existing notifications like uh, Firebase and uh, uh, iOS? Um, so it comes down to um, security, for instance. Um, you can't really attack someone if you don't know where they are, how they're connected, um, anything about their connectivity. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to send you a transaction, I don't need to know where you are. Okay. I don't need to know how you're connected to the internet. Um, I don't even need to advertise uh, what your next address will be to the world. We can uh, calculate that ourselves. So it's almost using like a Bitcoin network to, for, for communication instead of other? Yeah, correct. Um, so we can actually use it for um, verifiable communications that leave uh, evidence and logs of what we're doing. Okay. So this can be an alert that I need to do something else, for instance. So I can send you um, a packet. Now, you know that this is how I need to communicate. And that packet can have other information. So how do I now directly communicate with you um, as a simple methodology? So I want you to connect to me. Okay. How do I, I mean, um, so I send a, a packet. It says um, like it's in a calculable address that you'll be able to determine, you know, um, address one, address two in a hierarchy. We mm -hmm. can form hierarchies of addresses. 
you get the next address from me and that information could either be open or encrypted, could have information in there as a simple example, um, such as using the Diffie-Elman shared secret to XOR or encrypt an IP address mm. okay. or yes. other information. So now I can send you something that says for the next uh, 50 minutes, this is my connectivity point. Mm. Okay. So now you know that if you're going to connect to me, this is where you have to connect to. Is this mostly for like uh, privacy? Or? Um, privacy and security. Okay. Uh, as I said, if you're um, setting up a network of uh, sort of connectivity between individuals, such as in a corporation, um, they're going to be connected on the open internet they don't want everyone knowing who and where they are, which part of the which part of which organization they're a part of, then they don't want to advertise. So uh, if someone can find that that information and track it back, they're going to be able to model that organization. Hmm. Okay, I don't even need to send um, using a stream of existing Bitcoin, I could use individual unrelated coins. Unrelated coins, so what, what do you mean? So, uh, you know the next address that you want to receive on is uh, A plus um, some calculation of G that we have as a, a shared value. That's one way of doing this. So, you know if you receive something on that address, the only person who can calculate that address and send to it will be me. Mm -hmm. Yes. You don't care where it came from, do you? No, and uh, I probably don't know. I cannot figure that. So, no, you don't even need to do that. But that could even have a new encryption by having the address that I sent it from use a new version of the Diffie-Hellman key mm -hmm. that we now encrypt with. So you now see uh, there's a message. Uh, it's from this new source. The calculation of the new address is fine, but um, now you take calculate the new key, take the information in there, and you can do some other computations to see where I connected from, what I what information I want, any other messages. Uh -huh. That will allow you to now connect to me and potentially get any other additional information, which could also be hashed externally. Um, so I could have um, a block of other information that I want to exchange with you. And that could be hashed to you. Okay. Yeah, just trying to play devil's advocate here. I think uh, mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, for example, right now we are even communicating over the open internet, right? So a lot mm -hmm. of people can monitor our traffic. So for some people use a VPN, and you know, how mm -hmm. is this uh, it's different or it can be a part of the VPN or? Oh, it can form its own VPN. Okay. But point to point. Mm. So, so, so I could, so for instance, I could set up um, uh, something that communicates to you, says this is my uh, connectivity point. This is the uh, key requirements. Uh, how uh, I require you to connect. And mm -hmm. then we start exchanging information. Okay. So is it uh, more secure than VPN? Because VPN, you may somehow, you got the... Well, it's still a VPN, but how do you initiate a VPN? Okay. What happens when you move to a new address? Mm. If you have a single VPN point, Everyone knows where to try and attack it, where to connect to it, what, how to scan for IP addresses, and um, how to then scan for passwords and, and check for vulnerabilities. I see. Okay. So imagine if you had to try and scan the IPv6 network. Okay. Okay. And exactly. Um, so imagine now that you're a random IPv6 um, address that pops up 
and that I can connect to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's massive. So how long? Uh, yeah. So the attacker might then be able to go, ha ha, I'm going to monitor things. Mm -hmm. So what? It's encrypted. But they don't even know whose encrypted channel it is anymore. Um, but um, if you need to prove anything, you can say, here's my um, proof of connectivity, um, etc. I see. OK. Why is this a different? Um, mm. uh, OK, so I, I first try to see if this my understanding. So mm -hmm. is this approach versus like a Bitcoin approach versus like, say, uh, Monero or Zcash is because they are completely untraceable. So even so here we can always say, well, that's I mean, a payment I mean? that is untraceable. This is okay. um, using as sending information. It's not untraceable. It's uh, basically pseudonymous and hidden once again. Okay. So it's not like I am um, completely anonymous. I'm not. I actually leave an audit trail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, the information, whatever we exchange, it ends up on. Hmm. Yeah, and okay. if I'm a bad guy, the last thing I want is um, an audit trail. Okay, yeah, that's, I don't know, maybe that's uh, here's why my audit trail are... of all my nefarious activities. Ha <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, that only happens in old James Bond movies. And maybe Austin Powers, but he's just booting mm -hmm. them. Yeah, somehow it's uh, both British, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, now this doesn't need to be people either. Machines? It can be machines. Mm -hmm. So if we want to set up communication processes for Internet of Things. Okay. One of the difficulties in um, setting up uh, Internet of Things and IPv6 is how do we send all of the differential information that is required to open channels, to maintain channels, to keep them secure without having a big database of uh, connectivity. How about if we could set up a base root key and derivatives on either side, and mm -hmm. we could watch and monitor information going back and forwards between them. Mm -hmm. That will now allow us to even have the encryption between these devices set. By monitoring, you are not. Uh, it's not necessarily you are you are monitoring all the transactions on the entire Bitcoin network. No, what we would want to do if we have small IoT machines is have a variety of different gateways that they connect to. Okay. So uh, one of the areas I learnt from sort of the hard way in trying to stop some of this was in the creation of botnets. Um, to be able to run these very big networks, like sometimes tens of millions of machines in the past, Conflicker, etc. Um, the bad guys created a hierarchy of command and control servers. Mm -hmm. We can do the same thing, but to secure networks. So I can send out a message that will be seen by some of the command servers that then can distribute independently to each um, IoT machine and update as needed. Mm -hmm. So they can send direct links, but to a subsystem or hierarchy of all these other machines. Uh, versus the current approach, mm -hmm. is, um, where does the additional security come from? Um, because it's uh, again, a lot of information is hidden because you have uh, using all this, uh, I don't know. It's not only hidden, and... it's also um, authenticated. I the, okay. the key process um, okay. in, um, in, in how we, we do this, the, the distribution of, of public-private key pairs, the creation of uh, known um, address structures means that we can authenticate the host and get information. Only that host will know the challenge, the same as in a challenge response scheme. Mm -hmm. So I can do a challenge response scheme, a scheme over Bitcoin addresses and updates. Mm. Okay. Um, so similar 
um, do you understand how um, Kerberos or Cerberos, depending on how you want to say it, works? Um, no, no. Uh, well, we could mirror some of that and create a token distribution system that sits on top of Bitcoin. Is this uh, related to the KPI or is it a different thing? Um, a bit different. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, it's, I mean, it can be related and you can use PKI, um, but we can have unrelated uh, key structures that are used the same way as Windows Active Directory or Kerberos on um, Linux um, to send tokens. And those tokens can be um, payment channels that periodically save and um, record information on the blockchain. Um, so I can send you a Bitcoin um, transaction that actually also is a token. Mm. Now, if I'm doing that and I'm embedding different information to different addresses, I can start updating different groups of machines sequentially or any way I want, really. Okay. So um, in our DFA type model, uh, I can send something to everything. Um, I can do if then statements to filter out a tree of um, possible uh, options, uh, meaning that I can send to either a machine, a group of machines, or uh, every, everything. Uh, a set of instructions that can be validated, say, uh, to do a variety of different tasks. So I can say, get a new firmware version. Here it is on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. Here's an overlay network address. Go to that and download all of the uh, updates that you need. Okay. These will be validated using this um, key for authentic uh, for authentication. Mm. The hash will be this. Okay, just curious. So, what's the uh, current state about in this kind of IoT device? For example, I want to some upgrade my firmware. It's just a uh, download from pretty much uh, an off anywhere. It, it doesn't know um, whether it's safe well, or not. Well, a lot of what happens is we have a PKI model right now. And if the certificate server is compromised, okay. then you trust the certificate server. Um, so like uh, uh, many years ago now, but Diginota was a Dutch certificate server that got compromised, allowing both North Korea and Iran to uh, pump out a whole lot of Microsoft certificates that were not okay. real. And um, because of that, they had um, signing certificates for Microsoft updates and patches. And uh, the benefit of uh, just uh, kind of replacing this uh, Nexus system with Bitcoin is uh, because of it's immutable and uh, it's, it's traceable, so it's harder to to know, to, to hack it? Um, yes, and on top of that, um, we can do key updates um, as a process across the blockchain. We can also do um, software updates across the blockchain. We can validate the integrity um, we can have it not sitting on the blockchain necessarily, just the hash built into transactions. But then once again, the overlay network has a full version and we know that no one's compromised any of the, the files on the overlay network because the hash matches. So just uh, give a concrete example. For example, let's say uh, Apple, whatever for whatever it decides to use uh, Bitcoin to do the mm -hmm. iOS yeah. software update, how mm -hmm. would that uh, be different from uh, what they're doing now? Uh, how how okay. would that look so like? Rather than having to have a signing certificate, we could actually have a root key and a special key based on uh, your own information and Apple. Now, Apple, when they build the software in the first place, have their own software. Um, that will now incorporate their software. Um, when you go out um, or you get a push saying that there's a new version of Apple software, um, you don't need to go out and validate anything on a, um, a certification authority, uh, but equally it can be validated 
uh, from others. It can be multiple certificates as well. So to protect from compromise, I can have a range of certificates. So I can have a uh, sort of highly secure, locked in a safe in case something uh, movie worthy happens and people steal certificates to do this sort of stuff involving guns and mm -hmm. break-ins and kidnapping okay. people like Bruce Willis movie mm -hmm. version of mm -hmm. whatever. I can still have a backup that can override everything. Okay. I can do it based on Bitcoin key structures. So I could have a three of five. Um, so any of the updates must be signed so that rogue administrators can't just do this either. Apple can um, require that um, these three keys in these three locations are used. Okay. Yeah, it reminds me of a, kind of like a threshold uh, signature scheme. Like a, it can be, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so all of that can be incorporated as well. Um, then we don't need to worry about any um, Sony hack um, key reuse issues because we can actually have a single use um, ECDSA key. Mm -hmm. um, because it's a single use key, none of the Sony uh, sort of compromises will be possible. Um, other ways around that, of course, but um, mm -hmm. if you don't reuse keys, you don't have any of those problems. Yeah, I think the one thing I'm always confused is that it is to me it's very explicit in the white paper, right? You cannot mm -hmm. reuse keys, but every I don't know, like I got I read 100 papers. I think 99 of them when they try to tackle the so-called mm -hmm. privacy mm -hmm. issue of Bitcoin, it says it's just uh, because it's, you can link everything, and they always have to come up with some kind of very sophisticated uh, schemes to mm -hmm. to hide everything. How mm -hmm. how? Uh, why is this uh, like a mismatch between that was clearly stated to me uh, in the white paper and versus like a, I think I, I got uh, at least 100 papers that I've seen it's like trying to tackle the privacy issue of Bitcoin. This is just uh, yeah. the nature of Bitcoin was meant to be um, non key reuse. Um, and it was a system that allowed you to have your identity firewalled. Now what what people get wrong is they keep thinking of PGP. Oh, you have okay. all these people who have come from a cypherpunk background, which Bitcoin was never sort of focused on. And they have taken web of trust PGP models and thought this is Bitcoin. Um, I'm pseudonymous because I have a PGP key, but that's not what Bitcoin's meant to be about. Even the address structure in Bitcoin isn't the primary way that you're meant to use Bitcoin. You're not meant to use it by Bitcoin addresses as the primary focus. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at how it was originally put out there um, that a lot of people complained about, and I shouldn't have listened to people who were homeless and living in their car. Um, <laughs> they're not a good indicator, but I didn't know that at the time. Um, what you're trying to do is send to someone and do an exchange. So in the IP to IP Bitcoin uh, communication, um, I would connect to you um, and get a new key pair for that transaction. Okay. And I could compute that so that I could have a hierarchy of keys. And if I have a hierarchy of keys, I only need the one that can be my signing key. Uh, but it's secret. No one can, uh, you can put it together. A simple um, 42 type structure allows that to very easily be hidden and validatable. But um, simultaneously, I can rebuild everything. If I lose all of my stuff, I could, for instance, have it on a smart card. Um, a signing process on a smart card could also be a key addition process on a smart card that will allow me to create all these sub keys for a single use. And then I, I think could not, I mean, uh, the error people keep making is they think you need to protect your keys, but you don't. They become single use items that they're not there to do. So um, I should connect to you, you send me the, the single use key uh, or multiples, because if we want multiple coins, you send me something, I want five twenties and a 10. 
so to speak, like the way money used to work. Um, that's what you tell me. And I send you a transaction that way, either from multiple keys of my own, uh, multiple coins of my own, to multiple coins of yours, or however else you want it. Okay. Now, so two, what we were two talking questions, about, though, uh, mm -hmm. can I ask Sorry? two questions here? Yeah. First is, how, how do I, so you have a primary, almost like a master key, that's, a, for example, displayed in your website, or I don't know, uh, some kind of like a personal, Directory. Um, so there's a variety of different ways. It could be a government issued key. Okay, that's but that's only used if when we first do the first handshake. I want to get a new key, but I, it's not uh, used to send bitcoins. No, yeah, I wouldn't use that to send bitcoin at all. Okay, yeah, the, 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 you mentioned yeah we were at the beginning. You were talking about mm -hmm. uh, how do we just uh, use it and uh, hide or make uh, this kind of a communication private or yeah. hidden. I mean. I'm not even going to say this is good, but I mean, a simple um, sort of hierarchy could be um, your base key, my base key, HMAC of okay. um, transaction one um, done by a Diffie Hellman, uh, encrypted with a Diffie Hellman secret um, value. Um, so now we have a completely indeterminable uh, set of values that anyone outside of you and I cannot calculate, but you and I always can. Okay. And if I go to you, I can go calculate a stream of keys zero to a billion, and it will just uh, like you do with a Bitcoin client. But instead of doing just a set of deterministic keys, it will do a deterministic set of keys for communicating with you. Okay. Yeah, it's the same to me. Way. Can I extension? Uh, mm -hmm. This is idea of extending. We talk about last last class. Last mm -hmm. class. Last class. We talk about uh, uh, Bitcoin addresses for mm -hmm. receive payments. But here, not only for payment, but also can be for communication. Okay. Further, mm -hmm. you can have uh, once you have a uh, secure communication, then you can discuss mm -hmm. what uh, what's the next uh, key you are going to use or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So that brings me to my second question. I, mm -hmm. I think. A lot of people are trying to attack uh, saying, oh, even you don't reuse keys, right? But what mm -hmm. if, uh, let's say, uh, I send you two Bitcoin, uh, one Bitcoin to address A and then that to, to B. So when you mm -hmm. try to pay somebody three Bitcoins, you may, mm -hmm. because I, you, you kind of bundle the inputs, right? From there, I kind of can link these two addresses kind of like a, mm -hmm. you know, owned by the same person. Uh, mm -hmm. What's the kind of argument about this? Saying, wherever you, Put multiple inputs together but you don't do that i mean if we have this um way of calculating addresses and connecting the way the bitcoin was set up there isn't putting a address on my website and going everyone send here that shouldn't happen so okay. the address formula for bitcoin um, is calculable mm -hmm. the point is if i put my uh my my identity key of some sort whatever it is then i can still calculate under an identity key all of the sub values so you put your identity key on the website mm -hmm. okay i now um connect to your website and i want to send you an order and i want to lock something in so what I do is I calculate the new address that you would use between us. You could say this is the, the algorithm I use, uh, which could be a standard or not. I mean, it could be however um, you decide to, uh, it could be a number 42, a HMAC 42. It could be some other deterministic scheme that someone else came up with, um, but you connect and now you have that address. Okay, I'm now, even saying even you derive different keys every time, but when you, mm -hmm. if, if you're not careful when you are sending, when you are, let's say, trying to aggregate them, that from different uh, addresses, when you aggregate and send them together, so you kind of have a linkability over there, right? Uh, for the yeah, multiple inputs. Yeah, but you don't need to, to do that. So you have lots of addresses. So you never aggregate, you just, uh, why would you? 
Why do you need to? Okay, so it's one address, it always send to that and never like you, you almost never I mean, put uh, multiple inputs together because yeah, that's why? that's when uh I why would that think it's just uh smarter. why would you aggregate? I mean the size of, of transactions um becomes expensive on BTC. Okay. But if you're talking about small, cheap transactions because it's Bitcoin, not BTC, who cares? Okay. So, if so it costs you uh, a hundredth of a cent to send a megabyte in the future, mm. why would you care about putting all these little bits and pieces together? Okay. So, the way is, for example, if I receive payment from from you uh, on 10 different addresses, then I'm going to pay a third person. I'm just going to send 10 different transactions. I never like put them together. That's always. Yep. Unless I'm a miner, I somehow I want to aggregate all this uh, kind of like a dust. Yeah. I mean, if you're a miner or a bank or something similar to that, wallet, aggregate yeah. things. Um, <laughs> a bank has a different model. The bank's going to basically put everyone's Bitcoin into um, an aggregated amount and have a ledger of who owns what. Yeah, the same way they are doing it with uh, cash right now. Exactly. Very much. So okay. once it's in the bank, you don't own your Bitcoin anymore. And banks and miners will aggregate, but you as a user, why? So this is um, similarly where people talk about the need for change and um, uh, uh, spending times and transaction and chaining transactions and all these other silly things. Now, if I have 100 units and I want to spend 20, but I've got them in one unit group, I've got 100 one unit groups. You mm -hmm. take those? Yeah, then I spend um, 20 one unit groups. If I have a 100 unit group, then I have to split that. Um, so there will be times when you want to split, but equally, if you don't have to, don't worry. Hmm. Yeah, people, I think it's a... people um, have got too hooked on this notion of what they need to do because of um, um, uh, because of the um, limitations imposed by BTC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you imagine if uh, this transaction costs you like, I don't know, I don't know how much it today, maybe $10, $10. if you, mm. you know, can aggregate, probably can save you $1 too, yeah, that's reasonable, but uh, if it's just a fraction of a mm. cent, you probably... No, I mean, if care. you're going to be looking at the difference between um, a hundredth of a cent and uh, one hundred and one uh, of a cent, okay. Um, I mean, really? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's the problem many people sort of go into. They, they, they keep thinking about how BTC have constructed themselves, which is not the same as how Bitcoin's meant to work. Mm -hmm. so, um, but going back to what we can now do, um, I can um, give you information of how to connect to me. Yes. Um, so you can look at information and um, uh, the website could send you an update that is calculable. If I know where I'm going to be or um, there could be another update machine the same as certain DNS type servers work. I could have uh, a server that tells you um, without even knowing what it's hosting, how to connect to you. Mm. Equally, um, then I can connect to you, do the exchange, send any additional information that I may want to or need to exchange with you, um, which can be off chain but encrypted using the same keys. Mm. So, so I could imagine, everything. yeah, if you are like a paranoid, like a, whenever we are exchanging messages, it, mm. every message can tell you what's, where I'm going to be in yeah. the next message. You can. Mm. You could. Yeah. 
you could say and this is this is how I'm going to hop around the network, um, yeah. and um, you have to connect to me and follow me to keep following me. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah. Maybe if I'm uh, like uh, I don't know, Edward Snowden, I need that kind of a hmm. security probably. But, but uh, the um, guys. I mean, the something people haven't thought about is um, going back to applications for this. If we were doing a paid version of like WhatsApp, I could have different front ends for WhatsApp. Uh, WhatsApp. That could be commercial. I could buy the software, pay for a service, use it for free. I don't really care. The difference is the back end and the communication channel would be the same as the web right now. I could use Chrome or I could use Mozilla or I could use Edge. I don't care. So like my browser, I could create a chat application that is um, not controlled by Facebook or any, any other uh, application that is completely open. Okay. Is it because of the, the back end is based on Bitcoin? So everything yes. is a... Yes. So even, the back even, end, the, the encryption, the how it's saved, where you load things, um, methodologies for creating overlay networks, all of this can be standardized, allowing you now to have a unify, unified um, universal application platform that anyone can build their own version of. And there's no lock in. It's I, I don't own your data anymore. You own your data. If you want to leave and go to a different platform, uh, as long as they support whatever uh, funky additions they're going to have, mm -hmm. they can. But it wouldn't have lock in. You could now move and still communicate with all your old friends, all the existing people you know. So for this to work, uh, does the, the let's say chat history or messages that do they have to be stored just on chain or they can, yeah, not necessarily. Um, they could be off chain and verified. Um, okay. The the hashes and other information um, linked. I see. So I mean, if you want to be more paranoid, you don't need to store everything on chain. Um, but you can store the hashes of all the communication streams on chain. And that can also lead to how you decrypt each of the messages that you have. Now, um, again, you could build an enhanced network where you have overlays and the overlay uh, holds information potentially across multiple machines and you pay for that storage. We move away from the freemium model or the free model of everything, and we actually charge micropayments for people to host things. If you're more paranoid and, and worried about losing information, then pay for more seed machines. The same way as, uh, I don't know if you remember how some of the early peer-to-peer -peer networks used to work with um, like getting multiple people to seed a file and having leeches who just pull it down. Instead of worrying about that altruistic type model, like what we bit create, torrent. yeah, instead of BitTorrent, we have paid BitTorrent, um, okay. where all the records are there and we could figure out who put it up there so that we could actually uh, make sure that RIA and the copyright companies are happy about the information being stored. Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest reasons they're taking down always <laughs> is uh, I think most of the traffic, if not all, is uh, pretty much, uh, you know, not uh, copyright friendly. I think it's just, I used yeah. to use it to just download some uh, free videos. Yeah. I mean, you if know. you've got a copyrighted file, um, there'd be evidence of who's um, um, transmitted it and, and hosted it. Um, the copyright um, could even be linked to the file. So you have a provable, this is... Uh, who I'm attesting as the copyright owner, and someone could could sign off and say that. Um, all sorts of fun things can be done. So, what's your opinion on this uh, now very viral like a privacy app called a Signal? Is it? A, have you heard about this Signal? Um, it's an app. Called, like, a lot of yeah, the privacy concern people try to use it, especially in the cryptography community. I think a lot of people are trying to use it. Somehow. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've got 
signal on my um, my phone. I don't use it all the time because it can be annoying at times. I do with some people, um, but we could replace that and WhatsApp, um, any of these apps, without having Facebook um, own what we do. So we could create a alternative. Um, sort of update and uh, methodology. One where we could even send money to each other for payment of goods and services. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully stopping illicit trade in goods and services because uh, if there's a record of sort of the naughty things we've done and proof that we've done something illegal, then, well, go to jail. Doesn't stop you doing it, but if mm -hmm. the police come and knock on your door, um, you can sort of either um, I mean, they can prove by file hashes that you've got something without even going into uh, your machines. Um, all sorts of sort of fun updates in how we work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember like when we first split from PCH, uh, some PCH guys trying to upload some uh, illicit content mm. using money button or something else. Yeah. Yep, I know. Um, but going back to where we were originally, this can be linked into um, uh, automata and machines. So our Internet of Things devices, our automated um, control systems can be linked into Bitcoin scripts, depending on what values, what keys, they can act okay. in different ways. So that can also incorporate uh, encrypted communications to them. Hmm. So, um, as you encrypt um, a message X, message Y, uh, the machine has to be able to decode that, which could be as simple as an XOR uh, string. Um, but if you don't get the right information, then it's not going to act. Yeah, for example, like uh, I think there's two examples have been mm -hmm. brought up a lot. Like uh, one is a vending machine, this is a, mm -hmm. another is a sprinkler. So they are yep. also, I could imagine, adopt this kind of a uh, hmm. secure communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So over time, um, we can build more and more of these machines that um, could even pay for their own services that we could update. Um, so you mentioned sprinkler. Um, imagine a sprinkler that pays for the water as it uses it. Mm, okay, instead of a charge at every end of a, at every month, that's not, that yeah. is what my sprinkler is doing. Um, here in England, once upon a time, in um, a long distant time, probably before you were born, okay. <laughs> they had these um, electricity meters where you would pop money in. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, never. Um, so okay, that's probably instead before of credit card or something. Yeah, instead of credit card or electricity bill or any, or any of that, uh, you would actually go out and you'd pop like a, a um, 20 pence piece in mm -hmm. and you'd have electricity for whatever time period. Okay, and so I could, I could eat, yeah. Imagine you can easily replace this with a Bitcoin. Right? It's just a, mm -hmm. you don't need a physical coin. You just um, pay yeah. the meter and then the water yeah. just Pay as you up. go. Yep. Um, and we can incorporate that into not, not only water and electricity, but um, imagine movie streaming, mm -hmm. um, Spotify. Um, I could pay for, I could gem, I mean, if I wanted a, um, a model where I get Spotify most of the time with ads, but I've got a party and I don't want ads every time. I could pay for six hours of no ads, mm -hmm. which is a different model, of course. Um, then I could move to um, in incrementing that for um, allowing access for a house. So smart locks. Mm -hmm. Um, what I could do is give a, um, a smart lock an update key that links to this other person's address for a period of time. And when the smart lock sees um, something change on the blockchain, it knows 
um, it rejects everything and goes back and locks the the doors. Mm -hmm. I think this. Uh, I think this back is a question. I think I have 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 uh, from the beginning of this episode. So basically, uh, you're somehow this kind of like a low capacity, like a, even IoT device, like a lock, a sprinkler. Mm -hmm. Somehow you mm -hmm. can get update from the blockchain. Yes. So I could imagine they they will never be able to scan the whole thing. How how do they get this uh, specific notification? The target to them. Only they they need to can care about right. Is no, like but a, that's why I'm saying that we want to create overlay networks. Overlay, okay, that makes sense because you, yeah, Springer probably a vending machine, but mm -hmm. I cannot uh, start full node or so, scan. Um, Bitcoin doesn't replace middlemen. That's where people okay. go wrong. Trusted third parties doesn't mean no middlemen, um, and it doesn't mean no intermediary systems. Mm -hmm. um, like my IoT dumb device, a uh, very simple device. Can connect to this other machine that it can uh, trust it could be not just a machine either remember we can have multiple machines in a peer network which could even be uh, sort of commercially validated so i could have people paid to provide the services where they monitor the blockchain mm -hmm. and these 10 nodes all of, none of whom know each other okay monitor the blockchain and send alerts to my machine on an SPV basis. So you can do kind of like a quorum voting mm -hmm. stuff, whatever goes the majority. And it's not even voting uh, because um, does this exist on the blockchain? Yes or no. Is it my key? Yes or no. Okay. So we're not even sitting there going, uh, is it valid or um, I mean, we're just getting a sufficient number of machines have seen this and sent it. And yes, this I, I, I might not trust everything uh, that comes from a machine. I might think that maybe they're doing a, um, a double spend or something silly uh, and have an alternate version of the blockchain that somehow they're hacking everything. I want to be extra sort of cautious and monitor everything multiple times. So I'm going to only uh, take it if it comes from three machines, none of whom know each other. Okay. Yeah, since we just talk about this, I, I think uh, what's the technical difference between the trust third party and uh, intermediary or middleman? Because I think in the white paper, it's only there's a trusted third party, right? Yes, yeah. so, trusted third parties are a fiduciary. So okay. they are individuals um, that act not only as a middleman, um, but have roles in uh, processing AML, KYC, um, for instance, credit card companies, um, banks, etc. They not only monitor um, what you're doing, but record uh, like check for fraud, do all sorts of other funky things. That's what we're trying to remove. That's expensive. Now, AML doesn't go away if you're doing large transactions. Yeah, yeah. You talk about a lot of like uh, if you buy a car or a house. You, yep. You probably always I mean, it have doesn't to. matter. It doesn't matter what you're using. If you're buying with Bitcoin, you still need to do AML. Yeah, with with, with uh, watches. Um, but as I keep saying, AML doesn't matter if you're doing a hundred dollar transaction. If I'm spending 50 pounds, no AML. If you've got 500 yen, no AML. So what would be a good example of a, like a middleman or intermediary, but not trusted third party? Um, uh, anyone sending information and aggregating it. So if I was um, acting as eBay, then that's a third party. Bitcoin's not about this whole everything's decentralized BS. It's not efficient. There's a reason why that doesn't happen everywhere, why every single person in the world doesn't track down every other single person in the world and personally validate all their information and personally make sure, because it's just completely inefficient. No one will ever want to do that. 
um, Bitcoin's a, an economically efficient system. It's not a system for decentralizing uh, the internet, um, as people like this decentralization BS. It's a distributed platform. There's a difference. Um, there's no, we're politically going to take over the world. Um, sorry, not Bitcoin. Find something else. Um, not willing to help you uh, do your junk. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, they're, these people are always here. I, I don't know why, but mm. they seem to. I mean, they don't even know what decentralized means. I mean, it's decentralized finance, and um, so what? What's the benefit of decentralized finance? Um, it's more expensive. Um, it just increases fraud. Um, Decentralized finance is the um, uh, sort of catch cry of every single um, uh, scammer, as I keep saying, in, in Earth. Yeah, I think that you, you, you give us some uh, like a reference. They're using the same term 100 years ago. Yes, in some kind of a Bakishovsky. This is the same yes. word. That's, that's kind mm -hmm. of very amazing. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so. Um, what we're not trying to do is get rid of people who are um, acting to efficiently aggregate services. We won't get rid of real estate agents. We won't get rid of lawyers. All this, Bitcoin gets rid of all this. No, it doesn't, nor should it. There's a reason we go to real estate agents because do you want to look through 1 million houses? Pardon there's probably a million houses up for sale. So people in Silicon Valley will go, we can save you time. You just go to our website, but then they're a middleman, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They are saying we can automate that real estate's process and give you uh, what we think because we've got um, um, uh, actual ignorance uh, processes, AI, uh, and our actual ignorance uh, system will statistically give you garbage that has nothing to do with what you want. Yeah, you it's sound like the a, best actual ignorance in the world. Sounds like a, some of the pitch you can hear on some of the tech crunch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, at least Amazon are honest with Amazon Turk, um, uh, which is a play on um, the Mechanical Turk. Uh, in the 17th century where a chess playing robot actually uh, was a fraud that went on for years. There was a man in the robot, a dwarf, uh, who okay. was playing chess. Um, this is artificial intelligence. Um, it's the mechanical man, uh, which is someone in Bangladesh or Poland or whatever other country they're using, sitting there making all the transactions and pretending that it's a computer intelligence. It's not. So uh, why is it uh, more efficient to use in Bitcoin instead of some like a more extensive, uh, let's say, trusted party or middleman? Is this, um, uh... I mean, that's going to vary. I mean, there's no one answer. Um, but um, it, it's a Kosian problem where uh, it's transaction costs and, and the transaction costs in Bitcoin can be lowered. If I can now have your identity plus privacy, that drastically reduces the transactional friction between individuals. It, it means that we can negotiate um, securely. I can tell you are a trusted entity. I can do negotiations with you. I can transact with you. I don't need to go and verify your identity all the time. For instance, I can validate that um, Mr. Lou over here has um, a US passport key and that has linked in uh, on the blockchain and I validated that you, your degree is real, um, that you have actually got these valid professional certifications, that you did this work yourself, that you've worked for this organization. Um, and I can quickly put all that together 
not like even uh, LinkedIn with um, trust it because lots of people have uh, said that it's real. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, um, at one when I used to have social media at one point on LinkedIn alone, I had twenty thousand people connected to me. Oh, I mean, okay. <laughs> so, do you really think that twenty thousand random people who I've never met can validate and vouch for me? Um, so, no. I mean, who would you trust more? Um, someone that um, is a friend of a friend of a friend who has vouched for whatever I've done or the university. Yeah, if I'm uh, <laughs> really see guys, I'm trusted that Forbes uh, article more than the school. So I know. Uh, I mean, that, that's uh, the ridiculous stuff here. Um, yeah, we don't <laughs> want to go to the university because they've obviously been paid off. Um, a valid um, use of um, checking would be going to Forbes, who, well, are easy to pay off. <laughs> yeah, that's the word. I think uh, the service uh, you just build, uh, yeah, I could imagine you can be the first guy. You, you are probably one of the best person, uh, the user for it, because, mm. you know, a lot of people yeah. saying that degrees are not, you can just, you know, verify it yourself. So. Exactly. Um, for instance, in um, Australia now, um, we have a uh, a platform for verification of PDFs and degrees, um, which I find ridiculously hard to get through to American universities when I, I start with them. Um, they go send me the real thing and I try and say the PDF is the real thing. And they go, no, 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 give me the, the paper copy and we'll get it validated. I'm going, no, in Australia, we have electronic documents. And you can verify them because they're digitally signed by the universities and ugh, Americans can be slow uh, on these technologies. <sighs> Sigh. Yeah. So yeah, even when I find my tax, I think I, I still had to mail it. So <laughs> I don't know about oh, no. uh, in UK or Australia, but uh, every, every, I think the deadline is uh, April 15th, every, every April, the one day before you go to any like a post office is wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. Always a long queue of people trying to, you know, to f try to find the tax up before the very end of the deadline. So. Yep. Uh, whereas here in Britain, I go to a website, I fill in all my information. Um, same in Australia. I had uh, a secure signing key in Australia that allowed me to do all that. Oh, really? Oh, signing key. Oh, that's... Uh... Yeah. Okay. That's what uh, Bitcoin looks like <laughs> in the future. Yep. Uh, this is why I was talking with the tax office in Australia. I was trying to say how everything could be much simpler. Um, now, what I've also uh, been saying, and I've, I've mentioned a few times, is if we have a registered identity key, then all of the sub information that is linking our accounts can be proved to a single entity. Mm -hmm. There's no double sets of books. If transaction okay. one um, is here, then you can't have two versions of transaction one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No more. Yeah. Uh, it's just harder to cook books. Exactly. Maybe that, that's the whole. I mean, there'll still be ways around it, and people will still form fake companies and do all sorts of shonky stuff. Um, but there'll be records of all their shonky stuff. Mm. Uh, you you don't get rid of everything. You make it harder and more expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the economics says if you make something harder, they just uh, they do they just do less of it. It's like gas, right? Exactly. It's, uh, more expensive, people just drive Correct. less. Uh, yep. Um, so we didn't cover too much about how to do machines as we went off into a whole lot of side tangents. Oh, probably okay. important anyway. Um, okay. But we did, we did start covering some of it today uh, as okay. in, um, sort of connecting to these machines. Um, uh, so we need to go into that more detail and continue next time. Yeah, we can, we can definitely do it next time. Mm. Just one last question. I think it's a, yes. this to me is a, almost a, a what, what if a visa just a, uh, what's preventing Visa or Mastercard just to re uh, somehow optimize the back end so the cost can be comparable to Bitcoin? This is a theoretically feas feasible or is it? Uh, um, no, no, because if they've, if they've got the fraud cost. 
Okay, because it's just reversible. Um, fraud is cost it? is yeah, fraud cost is huge. Now, on the other hand, if we integrated Visa into a blockchain-based process on BSV, mm -hmm. we could have um, provable alerting. So nice. not just texting your phone or the app, but everything directly. Um, the equivalent of tap, but linked, um, it, it could be zero fraud. Oh, okay. Um, then Visa could do all their shenanigans and be cheaper. I mean, uh, I've got a number of patents on this sort of uh, technology. Um, and personally, I'd love to see Visa and MasterCard starting to use Bitcoin. Um, unlike all the other people say Bitcoin's not for these guys. Well, actually, it is. Um, and we could save them huge amounts of money, cut down the amount of fraud, um, streamline um, some of the financial services and make it all much more efficient. Yeah, sounds like, uh, yeah, you found that then I really understand this technology to me. Mm -hmm. That's a no brainer, but uh, we'll see yeah. how long it takes them for to catch up. Then. Yeah, okay. Always, always takes too long. Okay. Until then, we, uh, we'll Alrighty. catch up next time. Okay. Enjoy the rest we'll of the day. Okay. See you, you next too. time. All right. Catch okay. you later. Bye-bye.